Okay, today we're going to be looking at, uh, again, our seven segment displays. There are eight digits here using the Max uh, 7219 module. And today, instead of using an Arduino, we're going to use a cheap little three or four dollar um, ESP8266. Now, I'm going to be using some code uh, that I've created based on different examples. Again, check out the link in the description. That will bring you to my GitHub page. Uh, it's github.com forward slash melix1000 and look for my repositories that says hardware. Once you're there, go into the ESP8266 uh, seven segment display. And today we're going to be working with the basic web server. And so download that and then open up your Arduino IDE. This is the code here. Uh, these are the pins I'm using. I'm using pins uh, 5, 4, and 2. And if we look at the little pin out here, you can see that's the second from the top pin, third from the top, and fourth from the top pin, as well as using the 5 volt in the ground from the bottom left over here if you're using the same board I am. If not, look at the pin out for your device. Okay, uh, one thing I want to go over here real quick. Um, is when you go to compile this, so hopefully you've already installed uh, the needed libraries for the ESP8266 and chose that board, chose the proper um, uh, port, so do all that. But when you go to compile this code, you're going to get an error like this. See? And what it's telling you is it's missing this file, uh, pgm space dot h. Go ahead, copy that. And I'm going to show you, I'm running Linux here. I'm going to open up my shell here. I'm going to say find-i name or name, either way, and hit enter. I'm doing this in my home directory. And we'll quickly see that I do have that. You can see this folder right here under my ESP hardware here, that file does exist. The problem is it's looking for it in a folder called AVR for the A266. You can see it in the regular hardware here under AVR. But it's, for some reason, it's not there for this one. So all we're going to do is copy it there. First thing we need to do is make that folder. So highlight and copy that, and then say make dir for make directory. And paste in that and erase that part and type in AVR. So, oh, I've already done this once. So it does exist, the folder. Normally, you wouldn't get this error saying cannot create because it already exists. But you'll create that. So again, for me, it's in my home directory under a hidden folder called Arduino 15 Packages ESP8266. So all this, this entire directory was installed when I installed uh, the library from the community originally to use the ESP with the um, Arduino website. But I just created one folder underneath all that called AVR. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to again highlight this. I'm going to say copy and I'll paste that space Paste the same thing, but right here, add AVR forward slash. So you had the code, you had the header file, it was just in the wrong spot. Now, if you were to compile that, you would, uh, it would go through okay. Remember to hold down the flash button, uh, if you're using the same board I am, to flash it. Uh, I've already flashed it, and the reason I've already flashed it is because uh, I've erased my... Uh, SSID and my password from the code here so you can see it. So if I flash it again, it won't connect to my network. But once you flash it, uh, it will restart. And then, so I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to click my restart button here just to pretend that it's restarted. And I'm going to open up my serial monitor. So Control Shift M. And there we go. It already connected to my Wi Fi here. And it gave me my IP address for my ESP module. That's all I need to know. So open up that, make sure you have the right baud rate set, which you can always look in the code wherever it's set down here, somewhere, right there. You can always change that as well. Now you can open up your web browser that's on your local network, Chrome, Firefox, whatever, on your desktop, laptop, mobile device, and put in that IP address. As long as you're on the same network, and when I do that, I'm going to hit enter, and I have it set. So as you can see uh, in the web browser here, it says hello from ESP8266. And I set it up so that the board says, if you can read that, it says ESP8266. In fact, let me turn off my camera lights here. Probably make that a little bit easier for you to see. ESP8266. So that's, that's the default message when you don't tell it a message. So what I'm going to do here is I can pass it variables. So I can say... Uh, 
C-A-R for characters, and then I can give it some characters. So I'll just say, um, I don't know, 8383838. And when I hit enter, you can see right away, you can see how fast that happens. And uh, again, it can do some letters, so I can do like an A, and it makes an A. Um, technically, you can make a B by putting an 8 in there. If I did C, it's going to do a lowercase c. This is all from the uh, uh, Max 7219 library that we've been working with. It already has these, some characters built in, such as the ESP. And actually, there is no S. If I did S, it's going to not light anything up, uh, but an S would be a 5. So if I want to write ESP, I can type in E5P. And if I want to do ABC, I can do A8C. Oh, let me type that in there. A8C. Now, of course, we're doing it from the, sh from, uh, the screen here, from, uh, from the browser here. You can also, obviously, anything, anything that connects to the internet, anything that can connect to the internet can now control this device to display whatever you want on there. So, I can use something like curl. So, I'm going to say, or wget or curl. So, I'll say wget http colon forward slash forward slash put in that IP address. I'll give it a different message again. I'll say E5P8266 and I'll hit enter and oh, I put HTTP twice. There we go. So now I can also say dash Q so we don't get all that output on the screen here. I can now send different messages like a, B, C, or A, 8, C. So you can now write scripts. You can now, you know, send from any device, because anything you have, uh, you can have your router <laughs> talk to this thing and have it send messages and display them on the screen. Now, alternatively, here we're having this as a web server. You can also set this up as a client, as I was saying, and maybe I'll show this in a future video, but there are basic codes, uh, example codes for retrieving information from websites. So you could set this up to every minute or every five minutes or every 10 minutes or every 15 minutes, wherever you want to set up, request something from a server. It can be a remote server out on the internet somewhere, or it can be a local server. And so if you want, again, to have this display the temperature outside, you can check weather.com or whatever, grab the, the, the degrees and put in, you know, that it's, well, right now I'm in Florida in the summer, it's probably like 110 degrees out. So you can have it display that there and have it update however often you want and not need another device to send it to it. So again, uh, this board here, again, I, I just love mentioning this, Three dollars, three dollars and change with the full development board. Under three dollars if you just get the little chip there. And this was a buck sixty mailed to my house with eight digits and the the module here on the back to control it. And then a few pennies for the wires there. So you're looking at a project that's under six dollars. And now you have a little screen that can display stuff. You can put it in a nice wood box, or if you have a three D printer, print a case for it, or just hang it on your wall and be cool. And all you need is uh, you know a USB cable or something with with a, you know, a little bit of electricity going to it, and you can power this, and it's pretty darn cool. Anyway, I thank you for watching. Uh, you know, I hope you enjoy these tutorials. If so, be sure to comment below and let me know. If you, and if you like them, be sure to give a thumbs up. If you watch a lot of my videos and you enjoy my videos, think about becoming a supporter over at patreon.com forward slash Melix1000. There's a link to that in the description. Always check out the links in the description, because again, those will be links to my website, filmsidechris.com. That's Chris the K. There you can search through all my videos from both my channels. Um, there's also an RSS feed that you can get there, you know, if you want to keep up to date that way. Um, other links in the description will be to example codes and other information. So always check out the links in the description. And I hope uh, now that you go out and that you have a great day. <laughs>